Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. I'm actually very excited about the last two presenters. From someone who does not come from the technology or water side, but is very, very concerned about the Dead Sea, there seem to be two viable options on the ground. And I want to talk about, as an individual, a passion project that became a passion business. So from the project perspective, I'm very involved in the arts as a social philanthropist. And about four years ago, an artist named Spencer Tunick spoke to me about doing an art installation in Israel. He's known around the world for doing large-scale installations, probably the second biggest artist in that space today. And uh, when he thought about Israel, he said, you know, Israel is this amazing place called the Dead Sea. It's a body of water that unites three different nationalities together, Israelis, Palestinians, and Jordanians. Yet, nothing could grow in this, in this sea at all. It's completely salty. And look at all the modern miracles surrounding the Dead Sea. In Israel, you see the date plants, the date trees that are there. You see En Gedi, the natural springs. I'd love to do an art installation here that shows the world this amazing place. And he came to Israel, went down to the Dead Sea, and we found out that the Dead Sea was not the same Dead Sea that they've grown up with. We had seen how much it had actually shrunk. All the dangers surrounding that. Yes, the water is definitely disappearing, but all the sinkholes that are emerging making it almost dangerous for individuals to walk because they have visited the Dead Sea. We decided that in all places in the region, this is the place to do the project. So I was fortunate that um, there was a new platform called Kickstarter that had just launched. And this was a project that required a lot of funding to, take, to make it happen. Um, no one in Israel was really open to supporting this kind of project. So I went out to Kickstarter and I did this crowdfunding project in 40 days. And I was fortunate to raise about $116,000 from 706 supporters, people that wanted to go ahead and give money in advance to help us realize this project. So um, it took me about four years to pull it off, and on September 16, 2011, there were 1,200 people that came down to the Dead Sea, of which probably about 100 of them were not even from the region, people that flew in from around the world to be part of this. And um, this, is a, this is a picture that came up, that came up from it. It's been bought by museums around the world, and it's been continued through exhibitions, and uh, it was powerful. It reached through the mass media about 500 million people around the world. It was a front page of every paper in Israel, all the news stations, and many, many people around the world who are unfamiliar with the Dead Sea now found out about the Dead Sea and understood that there's an environmental issue happening in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is actually the shrinking and danger of disappearing. As someone that mentioned this was, a, this was a passion project, and I'm not an expert when it comes to fixing the issues, I felt there are many people that are better qualified than I am to actually go ahead and solve it. You have two regional councils there, on the Israeli side, the Migilot and Tamar Council, that have been caretakers of the Dead Sea. You have government, you have different um, activists, Israelis, but years passed by, and I felt that nothing was really changing. I've heard lots of talk, but on the ground, the Dead Sea kept shrinking. So I decided to go ahead and create a passion business. And that's called Naked Sea Salt. And the idea is, when I was thinking about the Dead Sea, everyone's familiar with uh, Dead Sea products for bathing and for beauty. But what does the Dead Sea have an overabundance of? Salt. Well, why can't we actually eat that salt? And there's little research I had done. I could not find eating salt in the Dead Sea, which didn't seem to make logical sense to me. I started to do some more research, and some more research. There were all these little pails telling you, don't drink the water from the Dead Sea, you may die. But um, in fact, it is possible to have eating salt in the Dead Sea. Um, actually, there's a Palestinian salt factory called the West Bank Salt Company. It's been around since 1964. Um, that was originally in Jordan, today it's in Israel. And they've been producing salt, mostly for the Palestinian market, as well as for USAID that's being iodized sent to Africa. And I've been fortunate to partner with an Israeli entrepreneur named Alon Lior, who um, is very into food products, and was able to create a line of gourmet sauce, of all kinds of different flavors and colors from the Dead Sea. And as someone that cares deeply about the Dead Sea, I said, wow, what an amazing opportunity. Let me take this product and put it under the name Naked Sea, which was the art project that I had, and use it as a vehicle to teach the world about the Dead Sea, to bring the product to people's homes into their kitchen, into their table, and create a conversation around the Dead Sea. And as someone that's focused you know, on doing good and on the environment, I was fortunate to meet Clive 
from the Arab Institute and understood that the solutions that are out there are very, very complicated. Both the red dead um, idea, the med dead idea, very, very technical, very complex. Through the work that Arabad does, which is research-based, before you try to tackle on such a big problem, you need to really know that you're doing the right thing. So I felt that Arabad had the right attitude in terms of research and diligence to actually go out there and do things that could help a Dead Sea. And as someone that's doing a business, I felt I could use my product as a basis to be a talking head for what Arabad does. So this is the website which I just launched. So the Kickstarter campaign also was 40 days. Um, we raised about $60,000, and close to 1,300 customers around the world gave money to be the first ones to actually try our salt. And I promised them that I would not sell to anyone else until they got their hands on the salt. So for myself, the past few weeks has been insane, literally making salt, packing salt, spending time in the post office, which is on a bit of a strike right now, and getting these packages out. And I finished the project yesterday, getting the salt out, and I was able to watch the website today. You can see on top that we tell people that we actually give 3% of our net sales directly to our Institute. And the purpose of the site is to go ahead and educate people, not just about our product, but more about the Dead Sea and our Arabah. So I encourage everyone to visit nakedsea.com and to look at our product. You don't have to buy it, but definitely connect more to the Dead Sea since the work that our Arabah is doing. And if any questions, I'm here, I'd be happy to answer that. Thank you.